What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, Chief. Good morning. Hi, Leah. Hi. Oh, good. hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> doing good, doing good. Awesome, awesome. So we get a chance to have uh, some, some great conversation today and also hear some even better music. So I'm super excited about uh, our, our next guest. Julie, please introduce today's guest. So Chief and Leah, it's time for another musical guest. We're always so excited to bring exclusive entertainment to you live. And Chief, you'll be happy to know that today's guests have an Air Force connection. Yay. Wingman. I got, a, I got a wingman in the building. Wingman, that's right. <laughs> They're an up-and-coming alternative band from Nashville. Please help us welcome Phil Cohen, Christina Pollitt, Marco Sinti, Emma Garcia, and Hayden Kotcher, better known as Blackout Walter. Hey. Yeah. Hey, it's so great to be with everyone this morning. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks so much for joining us and for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments and let us know where you're tuning in from. Share some love with the band in the comments below and leave your questions for them there too. We'll read those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends and the entertainment. So if you're not following our page, you should. Chief Chats are every week and following us lets you know who's coming up next. Awesome, awesome. So Phil, Christina, Marco, Emma, and Hayden, Thank you so much for being here live with us today. Uh, we're super thrilled to have you with us and know this means so much to the service members, military families and veterans out there so you can uh, help boost morale. Oh, we are so excited about this chief. Just thanks for having us. And we're in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee right now. We wish you were here with us or we were there with you in Dallas, but, uh, but uh, we're so happy to be with you online here today. It's great. Awesome. Yep, welcome to the show. Again, really glad you're here. So you said you're coming to us from Nashville. How have y'all been doing during the pandemic? I feel like we've been doing great. Like, you know, we're trying to stay safe and healthy, of course, but um, we've been really active as a band. We've been very fortunate to, I don't know, just embrace this, the new normal of live stream life as a band. So we've done a ton of syndicated live streams for some really big media partners and it's been, it's been really fun, actually. It, it took a little getting used to playing to no one in the audience. That was like, <laughs> <laughs> that was like the the barrier to get over, the big hurdle. So, what do what do you guys think about playing to no audience? Yeah. I'm used to it. Hey, it's better. I'm, I'm used to it. It's better than pre-pandemic times playing to no audience. So yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> But we've been trying to stay safe and healthy. Yeah. You know, all considered, life is good. Yeah, crazy time yeah. for the arts, but we're making it work. Yeah. 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 I, I compare it to me singing in the shower. Like nobody's ever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's an amazing way to look at yeah, it. That's a, yeah. It's like we're always singing in the shower. Come yeah. join our band. You can be a backup vocalist. <laughs> I'll be, I'm there. I'm, I'm on my next flight to Nashville. All right. I love it. There goes Chief Chat. <laughs> <laughs> So but Phil, yeah, we've um, been we've been doing well. Yeah. Great. Excellent to hear that. Um, understand you have a military connection. Phil, uh, thank you. We appreciate your service to our nation. Can you tell us about your time in the Air Force, where you served, and then what was your career like? Yeah, well, first of all, it was an absolute pleasure to serve. Um, I I joined uh, the US military through the US Air Force Academy. So I have sort of a strange backstory. I was playing full-time hockey prior to this. This is right after high school. Played two years of full-time hockey. Then I ended up going to the U.S. Air Force Academy, four years there for undergrad. Was commissioned an officer. And then uh, my first duty station was McConnell Air Force Base, Wichita, Kansas. And I'll never forget when I got that assignment, uh, when I was at the U.S. Air Force Academy, still a student there, I opened up the letter you get and I said, Wichita, Kansas. I was like, what the heck? Where? I don't even know where Wichita, Kansas is. <laughs> I'm like, can I get like Hawaii, please? I don't know. So right uh, in the middle of the US. Yeah, <laughs> right in the middle that you're right. You're right. So 
uh, ended up doing four years at McConnell Air Force Base and was on the operational side. So I was running, running the flight line there and did the big team leadership thing. It was amazing. It was like coming in as my, my first assignment was an assistant officer in charge of a group of 250 men and women. And when you're right out of college, you, you say, oh my God, this is amazing. And you learn to rely on, and Chief knows this, you learn to rely on your senior, your senior enlisted um, partners there um, because they've been around so long. So anyway, it was an amazing experience. I deployed twice in my four years there, once doing conventional aircraft operations to the Persian Gulf and then once to Afghanistan with the army as a mentor at the Afghan Ministry of Defense, which was transformative. And, and then after that, uh, went to Hanscom Air Force Base in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh yeah. Changed career fields. So went from the operational side of the Air Force to the business side. And then ended up getting out of a couple years after that and went to business school uh, in Cambridge. So the rest is kind of history from there. But yeah, that's the the military career was amazing. Uh, served with the most amazing men and women. And so happy that I had the chance to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad the Air Force got you out of hockey because you you wouldn't have had any teeth, man. And I, I don't know how singing and <laughs> not having any teeth. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I know, man. Hey, I, I've got a story. I had a story when I was playing full time hockey. This this one tooth over here, um, I, I got into a fight. I, you know, when you're, yeah. when you're playing full time hockey, you don't wear <laughs> shields and you fight and, you know, all the stuff you see on TV and uh, had a really bad fight on the <laughs> on this occasion. I was on the losing the losing wow. end of that. And uh <laughs> Uh, I found myself with that tooth in the middle of my mouth. And I remember my trainer, the team medical, uh, medical person said, it, he said, just push that right back up into your gum and drink a lot of milk over the next couple of weeks and you'll be fine. So, no. so I do have all my teeth, but barely. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is making me nervous I, for you. What is it like? Oh my Wow. <laughs> well, now that, that's a great story. Thanks for sharing. So, uh, so how did the trans, how did the transition from the Air Force? Uh, how did the transition go from Air Force to music? And uh, how did the man, the band meet? Yeah. So actually, actually, it was a smooth transition because I have always been a musician for as long as I can remember. Like I played violin and clarinet, and then when, when I was uh, fourteen or fifteen. A friend brought me over his place after school and he said, you got to try this. And he gave me this electric guitar. He turned on his little amplifier and he put on this distortion, overdriven sound. I remember we were listening to Jimi Hendrix music in the background. And, uh, and I had this guitar in my hand and it felt like nothing I had ever felt before. And it didn't matter what I played on the guitar. I had no experience. It sounded cool to me. So that's when I, you know, that's when I saved up enough money i think like a year later i bought my own guitar and and uh moved forward trying to write songs and what have you so since 15 years old that's really when i started getting serious about rock music and then uh i don't know so the 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 band so it was a natural transition post military i i knew Basically, when I got back from Afghanistan, I knew I wanted to live life on my terms and and just, you know, you see how short life is and what have you, and, and you just want to do what you want to do. So I knew that it, my, my time was my time was short, decided to get out. And uh, when the, the story of the creation of the band is kind of interesting, we um, we got a really interesting opportunity from uh, from a famous rock musician, Dave Kooning of The Killers. Uh, we met in a really strange way. Long story short, uh, I met up with him in San Diego at his place. And he said, you and your band need to come out and record at our studio in Las Vegas. And I said, oh, my God, that's great. And then uh, I got on the phone with some friends in Boston and I said, holy crap, guys, like we need to put together a band. Like we didn't even have a band at the time. So ran back uh, <laughs> back to Boston where I was living at the time cobbled together a band, flew out to Vegas, recorded our first project um, at the Killers Personal Studio. And and that was Blackout Balter version one. So 
about two years ago, I moved to Nashville. This was, you know, the, when that, that event happened, that was in, I don't know, maybe 2016 or so. And then fl- came out to Nashville and sort of, sort of decided to re redo the band. So we have our own story of meeting. And I think of particular interest was um, my meeting Christina. I was like, it's, really? It's so much less cool than the killer story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but th- this is, it's hilarious because I was trying to find a, a keys player and someone who can also, you know, do backup vocals and what have you. And I looked on some music player sites and what have you. I tried to network, you know, we have a close friend who connected a few of us, which we'll talk about in a second. But in the end, I reached out, I found Christina via LinkedIn, no joke. <laughs> I mean, rock band musicians on LinkedIn, so. Where everybody goes to connect with music. LinkedIn. Exactly. It'll, it'll never not be hilarious to me because <laughs> I've been a musician, you know, I, I, I'm a Chicago native and I've made musical connections every which way except for LinkedIn of all things. <laughs> so when I up when I when I transplanted to Nashville, I'm like, ah, what the hell? I'll put I'll put my musical resume on LinkedIn just because I'm moving to Music City to see what could possibly come of that. Well well <laughs> uh, well well, well. Bill, can you hear us? I think we might have lost your audio. It's not just me, right? Yeah, no, I can't hear me. Okay, (laughs) I'm like, is it just my computer? Oh, and we're getting comments in the in the feed too. Um, Phil, can you hear us? We can't hear you. (laughs) So you guys who are watching, thanks for bearing with us while we- Just hang in, yeah, don't don't, don't go away. We got something good for you. Just hang on, We're, we're gonna get it figured out. They're having a good time back there, I can tell you that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been, Chief? I've been doing good, doing good. Looking looking forward to hearing some music though, definitely. Excellent, me too. Uh-oh. Did we lose them? We, I'm gonna take myself off. I was muted. I was like just talking to you guys and I was I was <laughs> muted. So it's okay. We're just gonna hang on for a second. They, we did a sound check with them and they sounded really good. So don't go away. Just hang in. I'm sure they'll be I'm sure they'll be right back. Um okay, can you hear us? There yay! we go. Yes. Yay! Awesome. Okay, good. <laughs> we- so we didn't know what happened, but we saw that you guys were having a good time and laughing. I'm like, man, I wish we could hear what they were saying. So the last thing that we heard, I think, was about you were saying about LinkedIn. You got how you moved to Music City. You put your resume up on LinkedIn, and who knew, right, that this is how you guys would connect. But it's been great. We love playing music together, and once again, we're so happy to be here with you guys today. So. Excellent. So how did you guys come up with your band name? 
<laughs> yeah, we get a we get a lot of those questions. Um, I like to say that my my fake story, but it's a good story, is that I was playing a rock show in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and people were dancing while we're on stage in the audience and what have you, and then the lights went out. And then everyone really started to dance, even like crazier than before. And so blackout because of the lights going out and balter actually is a word we revived from like Middle English from hundreds of years ago that means essentially to dance without a care. And um, so that's the fake story I love to tell people. But the, the real story is it just sounds great, doesn't it? So no, but the thought of uh, the thought of like the lights going out and getting crazy to like music just like throwing all your cares away and just rocking out that's that's sort of the the heart of our ethos as a band so that that really resonated with us wow that's a great story so we've heard so much about your music i think we're all ready to hear you play live can you tell us about wild one and then do you guys yeah sure like wild one's an interesting one because actually at we we had cut like 14 or 15 songs in the studio for this past album and we were sealing things up we were in the mixing phase and i got an idea in my mind a melody and uh it sounded really strong so the next day i was in the studio i told our producer and engineer jeremy that i really wanted to do a demo and he said no problem so we we put together the song that's now wild one and originally it was going to stay a demo. It wouldn't be released with the, with the overall album, but actually it sounded so good in my eyes, at least the melodic structure and sort of the raw unfinished nature of it that we decided to put it on, on the album. And it turned out to be uh, one of our first singles we put out. So really cool. I, I really love that song. Yeah. Awesome. This is wild one. Yeah. So we, we love to hear it. Well, I'm a wild one You can't take me anywhere And then you fall out You always run around anywhere yeah. But I'm a rare fire You can't take me anywhere I let it all out You gotta fake them out anywhere But you can run out Or you can face it Just 
Man, that, that was awesome. <laughs> I hope that woke everyone up out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, and from what I understand about that song, it um, it's a kind of military themed, right? You have the call and response. Yeah, like actually, a military. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. You're right. Like, I had always wanted to do like us in the military and former military folks like and and for everyone out there online who doesn't know about this they're called jody's basically marching songs oh, yeah. and i always wanted to write a song that had a call and response like a deep call and response element to it and some people have done that a little in music but i basically wrote a whole song <laughs> in that sort of style and i think i don't know i really i really like that one i love like the backup the strong backup vocal component essentially everyone on backup sings almost every word of the song with me so yeah so i want to know who who's the wild one in the in the crew it, like who, who's the one you can't take anywhere uh i feel christina. like christina, oh, christina. <laughs> no, 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 no. i'm the obvious wild one but the wild card is hayden, hayden. <laughs> hayden. Oh. Wait, he's unassuming don't, you don't know did yeah. you say that emma hayden well, yeah don't no, sleep don't sleep that. on hayden no. <laughs> no no that's great yeah I'd say Christina is the, the sure bet, though. Okay, <laughs> whatever. It is what it is. If you're going to do Own it, it, do it, it. it. right. <laughs> exactly. and, and Christina is the one on LinkedIn, too, man. You, would, you wouldn't even <laughs> put LinkedIn and WOW like together. Dude, I know. I know. <laughs> well, you know, you got to cover all your bases. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's really fun to play for you guys. I'm like... Once again, this military connection is really mm -hmm. cool. We don't we don't get a lot of opportunities to talk about it. And I would say some of the people who have heard our music before, they don't even know about that connection. So it's cool to it's cool to sort of discuss that in, in the open. Excellent. Well, that um, song was fantastic. So thanks for sharing that with us. No, of course, of course. So, so my next question is, um, so who, who inspired you musically? And, and, and also I'm curious to know what everybody's playlist look like. Cause you can always tell a lot from pe uh, people from mm -hmm. what's in their, what's in their playlist. So do y'all all have like similar musical taste or what's going on over there? Yeah. So I'll just, I'll just talk about influences for the overall band, but I'd love to hear what everyone has on their playlist because we all have a pretty diverse set of influences, but for for blackout balter as a whole we um and me specifically i was very influenced on the songwriting side by sort of the original uh punk rock movement that was happening in the 70s and 80s and that happened when my i was probably around 15 i was learning guitar and my cousins told me about black flag which was a hardcore punk rock band out of los angeles so 
got really into them that opened the door for a million other things iggy pop the mc5 out of detroit um you know of course the ramones in new york and minor thread in dc the punk rock scene was just so so rich in the in the 70s and 80s and this was a big influence in sort of the rock that we want to bring to uh to the world because it has attitude and we want to take it sort of one step further which is bring attitude and just this rocking quality to very melodic based rock and roll so that's a that's a little bit of a pitch on the band front but what yeah what what are musical influences what's everyone listening to well i'm falling down like a rabbit hole of the kinks lately i've been listening to a lot of the kinks um you know some of the old school alternative um but I think I'm feeling homesick with COVID. I've been listening to a lot of my buddies' bands back at Chica in Chicago. So uh, Tutu and the Pirates, if you guys haven't heard them, they're great. They're old punk rock from Chicago. Um, and uh, what, I don't know, like Salt and Peppa. I'm all over the place. I'm <laughs> really, I, well, you know, it's not the old business. That's I'm 90s, a, right? Hell yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Salt and Pepper, punk rock from the 70s and the Kinks. Emma, I'm kind you? of all over the place too. So actually, I want to do a really quick shout out. One of my best friends, Lucy Warmbro, does serve in the Marine Corps band. She plays saxophone. Oh, so awesome. shout out to her. She's stationed in New Orleans, I think, right now. I love you, Lucy. Um, and then my favorite band, of course, is Franz Ferdinand. I'm yeah. obsessed with them. Everyone um, knows that. Everyone knows point. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I'm kind of all over the place too. I've been listening a lot to this uh, this rock band called Soda Stereo. They were like big in the 80s in Argentina. Their closest like thing, I guess, would be kind of like the police. They sound a lot like that. But to kind of work on my Spanish and rock out, I've been listening a lot to them. They have a really cool <laughs> discography. And yeah. <laughs> How about you guys, Mark? Very good. Uh, kind of like you. I've been listening to a lot of punk and rock and stuff. Um, also, like you can never go wrong with like the chess records stuff you know um and roy orbison nice yeah <laughs> really? classic yeah. i'm not surprised by that at all yeah, i know really? yeah that's great i want to talk about melodies yeah totally, <laughs> totally. Yeah. totally. hell of a singing voice too that's mm -hmm. great aiden i've been getting into like classical music lately when I'm, Ooh. When oh, that's, I'm sophist that's sophisticated, <laughs> sir. You're trying to get smart. <laughs> I get it. So, so much of my life is, is, you know, playing music with, you know, degenerates guitars. like us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes me feel like I'm educated if I'm listening to something like, <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> like Beethoven or, you know, whatever. Helps, helps, uh, uh, I don't know, calm my anxiety. <laughs> How about you guys? What are you What are you guys into? Yeah. Oh. So my son got a, a vinyl record player for Christmas. My son's seventeen, so we've been listening to a lot of Violent Femmes and the Pixies, or what's been nice. going through wow. our house lately. Yeah. Wow, Jesus. that's that is amazing. By the way, that's right in the wheel well of this band. So. Well, I was gonna say that Christina um, and Emma, you guys sound like Kim Deal. I thought like your voice, the way your voices that blended together, compliment. sounded like her. Thanks. Way to yeah, my that's heart. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. You know those bands. I mean, those I, I would say those were very influential bands to mm -hmm. at least a few of us here. So good. That's yeah, awesome. That's yep, they're they're fantastic. And I can hear I can hear how they might have influenced your your sound as well. Wow. Very yeah. I, I'm big on I'm big on R and B. So I'm R and B and then uh definitely you know, rap music with with classical undertones. So I, I'll, I'll give Hayden some love. So, oh, that's really great. So I can have some balance in my life as well. So uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but but I I grew up. Uh, well, I, I I learned a lot about in life in the '90s. So the '90s R&B scene is, is probably Brian wild. McKnight. Oh yeah, definitely Brian McKnight. <laughs> yes. Donnell Jones, just a whole bunch of different uh, great artists from back then. Wow, I I don't know if it's exactly R and B, but I grew up in the Northeast Philly area, right outside actually. But um, but in Philly, and it was really catching on in the in the nineties, like Boys to Men. Oh, yeah. um, I'm not sure if it's R and B, but there's definitely like probably an R and B tenant to what they were doing. 
um uh, boy, boys and men is definitely r&b definitely new jack yeah, okay, swing great so it was the new, so new so jack swing yeah. is kind of what they were when they first came out on the scene uh because they I, had michael, i love them because michael bivens you know being from the boston area michael bivens kind of found them and, and got them going uh from oh, from new edition yeah. michael bivens from new edition wait was he was he bell biv devoe part yeah. of that yeah yeah he was oh. bell biv devoe yeah Oh man, I used to love Bell Biv DeVoe. Yeah, Way and they and they, they, can't, they 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 grew up in uh in Boston area. Oh, cool. did they? Yeah, new edition. Oh, I thought, man, that's. I was I was told otherwise. No, I I totally <laughs> I totally believe. I always thought that I was a Philly guy. I'm like these guys are Philly people. Yeah, I love. So they my, did a good job branding and. I love nineties R&B. It it brings me back to couple skate. Oh, oh, roller, roller yeah, I'd roller hold skating. my boo's hand to some boys to men. Your boo? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Romantic? Couple skating. Roller skating? Yeah. Like yeah. rollerblading with your boo at the roller ring, listen to some boys to men. Hey, Man, I know like I LinkedIn is I, she is she's she's on to something. <laughs> she's on I know. I know she is. Wait, can we just talk about roller skating for a second is this a whole thing sure. i don't know Did if you roller not do skating that is a thing. growing up yeah, yeah. like you go no, to the I, I mean it was so fun to go but yeah. you know the thing about roller skating very different than ice skating you just like you're in Wheels. the skate we yeah we <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly no you never picked up like you you know you just sort of bobbled you never really picked up your feet you just bobble and you go I mean, I think you don't know how to roller skate. Right? I, hey, listen, I okay. <laughs> I've seen it on TV. I don't know. Anyway. We would um, love to hear you guys play another song. Yeah. Uh, what about Burn the Ships? Can you tell us about that one? Yeah. Uh, actually, this is sort of a military focus song. It's okay. uh, I when when I write music. <clears throat> I don't usually write it based on like a story. Usually it's more abstract and and what have you. But this is actually about a true event where uh, military commander Cortez in the early 1500s showed up off the coast of Veracruz, which we now know as Mexico, to fight the Aztecs. And it was a big moment in sort of military history where uh, the Aztecs were you know, they were fierce fighters. Uh, all the men were told to get off the ship and, and fight the Aztecs. And some of the men were really scared. So Cortez actually ordered, this is sort of folklore. Some people say it's true. Some people say it's not. But uh, we use this as sort of the basis of the story behind Burn the Ships. But Cortez burned the ship as sort of the ultimate sign of commitment and forced his troops to stay in battle. And I thought that was a really cool theme for the band because, you know, in a way like starting a rock band and putting your whole heart and soul into it is sort of the, the ultimate form of commitment as well. So that's a little bit about burn the ships. That's, that's, a, that's an awesome story. Oh, my man. 
a man called Commodore, the man behind the war. And they rose from Cyrus, and they rose from everywhere, with the night on fire. And the sound went through me. Men were taken out everywhere. And the red blood ran cold. But where were my fighters? People running everywhere. Dear genius liars, they run away against the world. And the ships off their cruise course. Awesome. Great job, man. Hey, thanks, guys. Yay! That was great. Yeah, what, 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 I, was, oh, what I was thinking about when you when you told the story about burning the ships, I was thinking about the Titanic and the band going down with the, with the Titanic. <laughs> yeah. So so listen, if Black Hawk Black Hawk Boss is on the on the ship while it's going down, I'm staying there dancing. We're, we're gonna dance yeah, we're gonna with dance. the lights off. We're gonna dance to the end. I love it. <laughs> That's funny, Chief. I like that. You guys, we have um, the military community is watching from all over the world. Just wanted to turn just for a brief moment to our live feed and share a couple of comments with you. Uh, Patricia Smith is enjoying the show and she says that my oldest airman plays sax, drums, and electric guitar. He's at Nellis Air Force Base. He's a great musician, but an even better airman. Yeah. Wow, that's great. And awesome. and what Patricia? That's Patricia. Patricia yes. Wow, Patricia we hear Smith. you, Patricia. And wow. John P. Stevens, he says he is enjoying the show. He says thank you for spending time with us today. And I think thanks, um, John. Ch Chip Wilson has a question. He wants to know, and I don't even know what this means. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask. He says, uh -oh. "What does your live rig look like for the guitar?" All right, so I, I'm going to say one little thing. I am, like, the least technical, least worried about, like, tone, what a lot of guitar players um, talk about. My pedal board is literally two pedals. It's like this old distortion overdrive boss pedal and a tuning pedal. That's it. But Marco's the real guitar player. He can tell you a little bit about his guitar rig. Well, Chip. Um. <laughs> Marco's about to put Phil's pedal, little pedals to shame. Marco no, has like they're... twenty pedals. I have like two little teeny pedals. Oh, they're nice. Hey, they're you nice. got you got brake. You got uh, cute little pedals in my. You got feet. the gas. You got the gas and the brake, and that's not. That's it. That, that's it. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, it's perfect. Look at that. Uh, well, uh, Luke, the other gu uh, guitar player, and I use a lot of Earthquaker devices stuff, and lately a lot of the Line Six Helix. Uh, things. Uh, this is kind of guitar nerd territory. So if you play guitar, guitar, this is relevant. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially the Helix stuff is so flexible and um, great for on-the-fly changes. And yeah, I mean, but you know, you don't need too many pedals. Don't go crazy out there. You know, if you yeah. can't make like three sound good, don't get ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although your rig's telling me otherwise, Mark. Oh. <laughs> I have 90 Chip. pedals over here. <laughs> Chip replied back. He says, I use head rush gig, gig boards. Is that right? Oh cool. oh, cool. Yeah, that's um, 
kind of using something similar today. We're going uh, <coughs> direct in with the Strymon Iridium, so that's kind of similar to the uh, Head Rush there. I've never tried the Head Rush, though. I heard it's cool. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> Chip, that's a cool question. I love the technical stuff, though I don't use much of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I got Heidi Mangione that says, hello from Switzerland. I did see oh, that. Chief. Wow. Oh, hey. Thanks for tuning in. That's amazing. What's the weather like in Switzerland right now? <laughs> we'll have to Google no, that. I, I can imagine it's cold. Yeah. Heidi, I feel, like it's a, I feel like it would always be cold there. That's one of those places I haven't been in Europe. I feel like it always has to be cold. I guess you, you climb high enough into the, the mountains, <laughs> the mountains it'll and be it's cold. Always, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and all the cheese. I don't know. Yeah. 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 So uh, can you tell us what's ahead for the band? So I know you guys got some uh, new new music coming soon. Uh, and and j yeah, just go ahead and answer that that piece of it. Yeah, we're we're always we're always working on new stuff. Like we have some we're in the demo phase sort of for the next album. We'll be I feel like we'll be officially recording some new tunes soon. Um, so that's really exciting we already have a bunch of new tunes that are, you know, circulating internally and, you know, we're chopping them up and getting feedback from our internal circle and what have you. But, but this, the, the COVID thing really derailed our plans, any plans to like tour. So I feel like when touring opens up, we're going to take the opportunity to at least do a little bit of touring. So before, before COVID, we actually were in discussions on a, on an Asian tour. Um, oh, wow. I, I forget the exact countries, but there are a few countries. And then uh, we were talking about um, a European tour as well. So we, we hope to sort of pick up where we left off on that front after after everyone's vaccinated and vaccinated and all that, that sure. good stuff. But so, yeah, some touring, recording some new music. It'll it'll be great. Twenty twenty one is going to be amazing. So absolutely. Absolutely. So. I, so you mentioned, you know, the pandemic kind of put the, you know, kibosh on touring or whatever. So what, like, what, how, how are you promoting your music? Like, what's, what are some? It's yeah, it, it's, it's hard. Besides link, besides LinkedIn, because I know you guys. Are, LinkedIn, oh, we <laughs> actually we haven't. Christina is your 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 uh, lead on LinkedIn over there. Yeah, that's right. She. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you should check out her LinkedIn profile. I mean, it is stellar. It's pretty no, well polished. Uh, uh, but actually, so it's it's been strange in the COVID times. We've done a lot of live streams, as we mentioned before. Luckily, we've gotten a lot of opportunities from some great media partners like yourselves. So like Exchange and Chief Chat. Um, we did one for Spin Magazine and Bands in Town and Dash Radio, American Songwriter, like a number of them. And that's been really good to sort of get the word out in these strange times. But we're doing a lot of social outreach. And one thing that a lot of people don't understand about our band is like when you reach out to us on social, it's actually us responding back. It's not like management or <laughs> so we've had some amazing we've like forged amazing friendships via our social you know networks and what have you especially instagram and so reach out to us we want to hear from you we really really care about our our fans and uh yeah it, you'll be talking directly to us yeah. so no I, and we can we can vouch for that on this side because even setting all this stuff up we're, we're emailing phil like phil feels like the person <laughs> we're talking yeah to. there's no like guy behind the i'm not behind the curtain it's i'm in front of the curtain it's a yeah. grassroots yeah. operation yeah that's right that's right absolutely <laughs> so awesome well as you know we have soldiers airmen guardians marines sailors coast guard members and military families watching from all over can you offer some words of inspiration or thanks for all of our heroes? Well, as a, you know, as a military veteran, a former service member, I just can't thank everyone enough for their service. My time in the military was so special to me. The caliber of person you actually work with in the, the military is very, very, very high. So I just want to say thank you to everyone serving out there. We appreciate you so much, your service, your sacrifice, and um, your loved ones' sacrifices as well. So thank you so much. Anyone else want to say something? Uh, yeah, my I grew up in a military home. My dad's a Marine, so oorah 
Send right. us there you go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, thanks for your service. There's a, there's a lot that we, you know, I think collectively as a society wouldn't have without it. So thanks. Mm -hmm. So what Chief didn't share is he originally was in the Marines. Oh, yes. Whoa, oh, cool. Do yes. you make your kids bounce a quarter off their bed sheets? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't know if I can say that nowadays. Back in the 90s, I definitely would have said absolutely. But uh, like, no, That's I know right, you might get in trouble. sensitive times now. I can't. <laughs> He's Air Force I, now. <laughs> hey, I had to I had to do push-ups as punishment instead of like groundings and stuff. So oh, man. fine though. Awesome. That's hardcore. Hardcore. <laughs> hardcore. Hey Phil, we got, we got a question, question uh, a little from the... we, got, we got a question from one of our uh our staff members, uh Sean Applegate. He he was a he was a chief in my position two iterations ago. Uh but he, he wanted to know what was your AFSC AFSC in the in the Air Force? What what was your job? So I was a uh, man, it's been a while to throw out numbers. <laughs> well, so you, I, you don't have I to was throw out a, numbers. I, I think I was like a was it a 21 or something uh, for uh, the operational side? I was an aircraft maintenance officer, so I led all the flight line stuff, the launches, catches, and all the folks, um, uh, all the folks doing amazing things on the the flight line. A lot of people know what a crew chief is, so those oh, yeah, guys yeah. and I were, you know, we were a big part of the team. And then yeah, I think that was 21 Alpha. It's been a while. But then I transitioned after the Persian Gulf and Afghanistan with the Army. I transitioned into the 63 Alpha AFSC, which was acquisition program management. So more the business side of the Air Force. But that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Sean writing you on the side. I just, I yeah, didn't see yeah, that he, one rolling. He's, he's writing, he, he's writing you on. He's not like, mm, Sean, you got to drop it in the chat, Sean. He, Come on. <laughs> he, he was the original chief. Love you, Sean. Keep 1.0, right? Yeah. He's my great grandfather. That's what I call him. <laughs> Good to be in touch, Sean. Thanks for the question. Well, y'all, I think we have time for one more song. What would you like to send us out with? Uh, we're going to send you out with a red letter. This was actually the first single off the latest album. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Me too. <laughs> So now you're on the radio, another one in stereo, another night to hold your hand, a radio around again, and now you're on the cover board, assembling how it made, to walk away and walk by, a radio take me, and I hold up my hands as you run. So now you're on the cover board, another night in the door, another night to hold your hand, but you don't really need it, and now you're on the stereo, assembling how it pays, to walk away and walk by, the radio takes me, and I hold up my hands as you run.
Man. Thanks. That I think awesome. that I think they're the first guest who's had more than one camera as well. Yes, that yeah, 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 yes, yeah. very well done. Not even yeah. Matthew yeah. McConaughey. Come on. Not <laughs> even. Yeah. No, <laughs> not even Matthew. You <laughs> set the game up, man. You, you y'all set the bar, Black Hat Balter. Good. That's it. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Well, that was terrific. Thank you so much. Um, before we say goodbye, where can viewers go to learn more about you and your music? Uh, the best is probably social. So we're just blackout balter. Balter is B-A-L-T-E-R on all the social platforms. And then our website is blackoutbalter.com. Check us out. Once again, on social media, like hit us up. We're going to be talking directly to you. So we want to hear from you. What do you like? What are your thoughts about our music? We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. And so you can find me on LinkedIn, obviously. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I talk to strangers, obviously. <laughs> obviously, this guy. So. so, so it was it was awesome getting to know you all. I got Phil is my the wingman. Christina's the wild one on LinkedIn. Yeah. Marco, Marco's the the pedal master. <laughs> <laughs> Emma's the quiet one, and Hayden is the sleeper. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't sleep on Hayden. Yeah. But you got just, us. So for the entire band, thank you so much. It was, it was an honor and pleasure having you with us today. Uh, you guys are an awesome band, and, and we look forward to seeing your music in the future. And we hopefully we can, you know, once all this COVID crap goes away, we can have you perform on base somewhere on, on, on a military. We would, we would absolutely love, love that. that. It'd be an honor. And this was so great, Chief, to everyone as, you know, every, all the team and everyone watching online. We really, really appreciate you. Uh, and to the servicemen and women, of course, uh, we couldn't be thankful enough for, for all that you do in your service to this country and keeping us safe and hope that you always stay safe out there. Thank you so much. And thanks, Chief. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. And so thanks for spending time with us and boosting spirits for our military communities in the globe. And we wish you all the best. Uh, Chief Chat out. <laughs>